Another Sunday School Short. Today we're in the book of James, walking through the New Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. James was a half-brother of Jesus. Jesus, again, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. James was conceived from Joseph and Mary. Uh, he became a believer after the resurrection. He was a central leader in the church of Jerusalem. And this letter is a letter of faith in Jesus for salvation. Yet it also... Uh, shows us the need for believers to live godly lives. It's kind of like the how-to book of Christian living. I'll be sharing bullet points here. It's a lot like Proverbs in many ways, um, where there's bullet point information. I just can't hit everything in this format, but don't neglect the reading. I'm just the spark plug. I'm just your encourager to be in God's Word. Be a daily Bible reader. James 1. Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble comes... Uh, your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Essentially, he's saying, hey, if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger, and wording like that. Verse 5, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. In 12, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, verse 14. Those desires give birth to sinful actions. See, sin uh, is allowed to grow and give birth to death. So the Christian walk here is to run to repentance. I've said that many times in previous devos. As soon as you recognize sin in your life, turn from it. Turn back to God. Say, no, I don't want to think those thoughts. I don't want to do those things. God, keep me from that. Um, and then uh, in 17 and 18, it says, Whatever is good and perfect comes from God. Out of all creation, we became his prized possession. 19, you must be quick to listen and slow to speak, slow to get angry. Well, that's godly wisdom for anybody at just about any time. We got two ears and one mouth, so hey, let's be quick to listen. Don't just listen to God's word. We must do what it says, verse 22. And you can't just say, oh, that sounds good in theory. No, you have to... Otherwise, you're just fooling yourself. You have to implement God's word into your life. Verse 25, if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. The second chapter of James, how can you claim you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others, whether the rich, poor, the color of their skin, they have a disease, or they have a defect, and their sexual orientation, whatever. Pull the log out of your own eye, essentially, is what it's saying here, and take care of your own business before you start getting into other people's business. All right, we've all have issues. Work on yourself. Verse 9, if you favor some people over, over others, you are committing a sin. Verse 10, for a person who keeps all the laws except for one is guilty of a, is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's laws. Mm. That's a Bible verse that you need to stick in your head to become a memory verse for you. Uh, if there is no mercy for those, or excuse me, verse 13, there will be no mercy for those who uh, don't show mercy to others. And then in 14, what good is it if you say, I have faith, but do not show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Verse 17, faith by itself is not enough unless it produces good deeds. And it uh, it is unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. And let's put a pin in this because many people beat you over the head. Certain uh, sex of sex s e c t s of Christianity will beat you over the head with this, and people with poor theology will beat you over the head with this Bible verse. I call that piecemeal in the Bible, just taking one verse and just hitting people over the head with it. But if it's dead, if something's dead, it's not alive. It's not real. Okay, if my car is dead, it's not alive. It's not work. It's not working. It's no good. All right, not that. That's not faith at all. Essentially, is what he's saying. Faith in word only or in intellect only is not the faith that comes from your heart. And in eighteen, it kind of clears this up. I will show you my faith by my good deeds. So out of faith, if we truly have true faith that Jesus died for us, died in our place, took our place on the cross. He paid our sin penalty. He defeated death, defeated hell, defeated the grave, rose from the grave, and has eternal life, offers that to me and you. 
if we truly have that type of faith, then good deeds will automatically flow out of that. That's just what James is saying here. I'm not saying it's a work type, get to God type. And we'll, we'll talk about this further in Galatians down the road. Do good, de do good deeds save you? No, no, no. If you're truly saved, will you have good deeds? Yes, yes. And this is what he's saying here. And it talks about uh, saying you have faith. Being agreeable when people ask you those faith questions or you ask somebody else faith type questions and they say, I, yeah, I believe in God. Um, but is it a true, is it an intellect thing? Is it a true saving faith in Jesus Christ to save you from sin and death? Verse 19, the last part, even demons believe this and tremble. So saying that you have faith is not enough. Has it penetrated your heart? Has it caused you to change? Abraham, and then he talks about Abraham. Abraham was found righteous by his actions, okay? Um, if you were to ask Abraham, do you believe in Jesus or do you believe in the Most High God? He would absolutely say yes. But he demonstrated this. He proved it also, and this made his faith complete, it says. We should be, we uh, are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. This proves our faith, our public acknowledgement, our baptism, our tithing, putting others first, etc., etc. Not just one of these things, doing all of the above. Uh, just as the body is dead without breath, faith is dead without good works. So, Rob, if I die, I'm dead. I'm no longer alive. I'm not living. I no longer exist here on earth. So, I'm dead. Your faith is the same way. If you're not living it out, it's dead. It's not real in the first place. James 3, it talks about the tongue and controlling it. The last part of 5, a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire, and the tongue is a flame of fire. Proverbs speaks a lot about this. Uh, even a fool seems wise when he keeps his mouth shut. That type of thing. Uh, people can tame all types of animals, but no one can tame the tongue. Verse 7 and then. In nine, sometimes uh, it praises the Lord and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. That's you and me. Blessings and curses come from the, out of the same mouth. Surely, brothers and sisters, this is not right. Verse 10. And in 13, if you're wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. And James 4, chapter 4 uh, talks about quarrels, fighting, and jealousy, that type of thing among us. Um, if uh, no, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. This is similar to Matthew 6, 33, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and he shall add all these things unto you. That, that type of thing. So ask God for wisdom. Ask God for what you need. Um, and even when you do ask, it goes on to say in verse 3, your motives are wrong. So we need to ask according to God's will. His will be not, not mine. He's not a genie in a bottle. Verse 7, so humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Come close to God and he will come close to you. Verse 11, your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone who gave the law is the judge. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. And then it talks something about like, like this. Um, if, you, if you want to make God laugh, this is essentially the wording in the next part. If, if you want to make God laugh, just tell him your plan. So what you ought to say in verse 15, and what you ought to say, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this and that. Uh, otherwise, you're just boasting in yourself, it goes on to say. And then 17, remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and not do it. So uh, I have a pastor friend that said he can preach a whole sermon just by standing up and say, do what you already know what you should be doing. Go ahead and already, already go ahead and do it, what God's called you to do. Ver chapter 5 starts out with a warning against the rich and selfish. It's, it's not sinful to be rich and wealthy, but are you, ask yourself this question, are you selfish or are you generous? I've met plenty of selfish people that are both poor and rich. I've met poor people that are very selfish. I've met wealthy people who are extremely generous. Dave Ramsey says money is just a brick or a tool. You can use a brick to throw it through a window, cause destruction. You can use it to build a church or build a school or build a home. Verses 7 through 12, be patient, waiting on the Lord's return. Take courage, 
for the coming of the Lord is near. Verse 8. Praise God. Endure sufferings for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. It ends talking about praying. Uh, if um, if the if you're sick, have elders pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Confess your sins to one another, for the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Like, subscribe, and share. These are just the high points. Get into God's Word. Get in. We're going to continue on with Acts. We're going to be in Galatians before too long. God bless you.